what we're being asked to do right now. Is. To look at the graph. And find the zeros and find the X intercepts. Actually, we're being asked to find the X intercepts first and then we're being asked to find the zeros, which is really backwards. OK, so the zeros and the X intercepts are where the graph crosses the X axis. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So positive eight and negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven. OK, so we've got negative seven and positive eight. Now let me write down what your answers should look like. Ooh, there it went. OK, so for number one. OK, the X intercepts there, what there, what is being asked for first? OK, that's. Negative seven zero and positive eight zero, but let me make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yes. And eight zero. Those are the X intercepts. <clears throat> now the zeros of F of X. that is of the graph, of the function that made the graph. Are the negative seven. And the positive eight. So that's the relationship between zeros and X intercepts. Now here we have the same kind of question again. We're being asked for both and they're asking for the X intercepts first. So in number two, here you have a cup down parabola and I, I'm gonna make it a lot bigger, hopefully. So it's easy to see. So here we can tell right away because there are the numbers. Negative two and positive four. Those are the X intercepts and they're the zeros. There's just a difference in how we write them. So negative two, zero and four zero. Notice how there are parentheses around each of these pairs of numbers. That's because those are the official names of those two points. But the zeros of the function are just the numbers negative two and four. They're just the numbers, the values that are on the X axis. And again, one more time. Oh, come on. Well, here, five, that's five, and negative two. Okay, so doing it again, doing it all over again. Oh, 
I look at where the graph crosses the x-axis, and the x-intercepts are written as points So you must have parentheses. The number negative two. Comma zero. And the number five. And the zero. Now that's the number zero, but these two numbers. Negative five at uh, negative two and five are the actual zeros of the function. Oops, ran out of room. So, let's see what I can do about that. I'll just move my negative over. right here, and move my arrow. Okay, so that's the relationship between x-intercepts and zeros. And one more time, but this is more interesting. You only have one x-intercept here. Let's see, this is number four. And you only have one x-intercept. That is, it looks like, positive one. So parentheses one comma zero, parentheses closed. And we only have one zero of the function. I should start farther back. is one. Should put a little head on that. OK, the uh, the zero is one, but there's something really interesting about this. One with. Multiplicity. I'm going to have to move over a little bit. Two. Now I know this for the following reason. When a quadratic, and that's obviously a quadratic, a cup down quadratic, when a quadratic has one x intercept, which means it has one zero, then it has to have two zeros because the highest power is two. So what do we do about that? Well, we say it has multiplicity two, and we're about to talk more about multiplicity. But if we were factoring this, we would see, in fact, we would see that for number five, no, this is still number four, that we could build this by saying x minus one times x minus one. So that that would give us x minus one squared. 
And here you have basic function X being moved to the right one unit, which is precisely what that is. And if we were to multiply these together, X squared minus one X minus one X plus one, which would be X squared minus two X plus one, that would be what f of x is. Okay, and, and what else? Yes, well, how I know that that's true, that there are two of them, is that whenever you see a graph come up, touch the x-axis, when I was a girl, we called it kissing the x-axis. So kiss the x-axis and then go back the same way. That means that that has multiplicity too. That's just another little fact you learn along the way about graphs. So, Anyway, let us move on. Here's number five, same thing. Okay, the x-intercept of five is negative one comma zero. And the zero of the function, zero of f of x, is negative one. But negative one is going to occur twice. And I can tell by the fact that the graph comes up, kisses the x-axis, and goes back down. So negative one has multiplicity two. You're not being asked yet about the multiplicity but later in this homework set, you will be asked. So I thought we'd get it started now. All you're going to be asked for in this problem is what is the x-intercept? Negative one, zero. What is the zero or what are the zeros of the function? And you would just say negative one. All right, now we're done with the graphs. My goodness, that's ugly. That's number six. It's telling us to find out if the number four is a zero of this function. Well, we're going to do that. This is another one of those functions that you don't know how to factor yet and won't until next week. But next week is almost here. And this is the beginning of it. All right, we're gonna find out if four, the number four is a zero of the function. Is four a zero of f of x. I don't know. We're going to find out. Yeah, messed that up. Okay, so f of 4. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, 
Well, I don't need parentheses because four is a positive number. Four to the third power minus 11 times four. There I go. I'm just used to using parentheses. Maybe I'm too old to change. No way. Humans are very adaptable. So anyway, the way I'm going to deal with this is I'm going to get the calculator. And here I was telling myself I wouldn't need a calculator today. OK, so we are, yeah, let's put this here. And yes, it'll go up there, but I'm going to move it down here. So I can see what to type. OK, now four. Carrot. Three. That gives me four to the third. Then I have to hit the right arrow key to come down, just like in my math lab. So four to the third minus. Eleven. Times. Four. Squared. Plus 17 times 4. Plus 35. Nope. OK, what I found out, let me make sure I put the right things in. 4 to the third minus 11 times 4 squared plus 17 times 4 plus 35. OK, I did put the right stuff in. And I got the answer negative 9, which is a very nice answer. But. If. 4 had been a 0. of f of x. Or if the function was called g of x or h of x, you would just write that. I mean, g of a, you'd say g of x or h of x, but here it's called f of x, so I said of f of x. If 4 had been a 0 of f of x, then F of four, which is the code for putting four into every X like we did, and calculate the answer, but the answer we would have gotten would have been zero. Four would have been the number that makes the function equal zero but it didn't make the function equal zero. It made the function equal negative nine. Therefore, four is not a zero of f of x. It flunked the test. And that's how this works. And that's how come zeros are called zeros. Let's do another one. And here we have another cubic. And now we're being asked about five and notice it's a no or yes or a yes or no question. Is it or isn't it? There's no in between ground. This is number seven. Our function is f of x equals x to the third minus 13 x squared plus 20 x plus 100 and f 
of five, since that's what they're asking about, is five to the third power minus 13 times, trying to do it this way, five squared plus 20 times five plus 100. And get the calculator up, not that. Get the calculator. There it is. And here's this. Whoops, there. Okay, clear. Five carat three. Where did it go? There it is. Five carat three, hit the right arrow key to come down, minus thirteen times five squared plus 20 times five plus 100. Okay, so five to the third minus 13 times five squared plus 20 times five plus 100. I'm gonna pull this up. Enter. No, really? You could blow me over with that. I wouldn't have thought that that would be true. Equals zero. So this equals zero. And that means that while this for this, I'm just going to write the no up here. For number six, the answer was no. For number seven, the answer is a great, big, enthusiastic yes. We need those, those um, zeros so that we can find the x-intercepts. They're also the building block of functions, as you're going to find out next week. You're going to learn more about functions here you think you know about functions. Ha, wait till next week. Hopefully an asteroid won't hit before then. It's just a joke. All right, and we have another one. We're being asked about two. Now it's getting difficult. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five terms. You see, next week you're going to learn an easier way to do this. A quicker way than even using the calculator. F of X equals X to the fourth minus 6X to the third. This is a quartic, by the way. Highest power four is a quartic plus 3x squared minus 3x minus 26. And now we're being asked about 2. So this is going to be 2 to the 4th power minus 6 times 2 to the 3rd power plus three times two squared minus three um, uh, times two. Ah! A soaking wet cat just jumped in my lap. Minus 26. Ah! Oh. My goodness, the only cat I've ever had that likes to play in the rain. And 
and I left the camera off today. Mostly because my hair looks terrible. Um, okay, sit down if you want to sit down. Now, where are we? Yes, we have to calculate this. So, Okay, so two carat four, right arrow key, minus six times two carat three, right arrow key, plus three times two, and you don't have to hit the carrot for power two because there's a special button for power two right here. And minus three times two. Minus 26. So I'm double checking and double checking. Mm-hmm, uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Let's see. Negative 52. Nope, the answer to this is no. Negative 52. Uh, and the answer is no. So you see how this works with zeros and why they're called zeros? Because when you plug that number in for every X, you should get a zero here and not a negative 52. Let's go to number nine. Now, now we are being asked to actually find the zeros. Find the zeros. Okay, now we have to find them for ourselves. F of X equals X cubed minus two times X squared minus X plus two. Okay, again, next week, we can find zeros pretty quickly by using a method you're gonna learn then. But right now, all we've got is factoring. We've got to factor by grouping. There is no other way to factor a cubic that has four terms. And like we saw yesterday, there are some cubics with four terms that we don't know how to factor yet and won't until next week. Next week is gonna be a big week. So f of x is going to equal, no, I don't wanna write that actually because I'm trying to find the zeros. So this is what I'm going to do. x to the third minus 2x squared plus negative x plus 2 equals 0. It's good to have a review on grouping. All right, now here the GCF is x squared. That'll leave us with X minus two plus. Now here we've got a negative one in front of the X and the X is the highest degree term. So that makes negative one the leading coefficient, which means our GCF has to be 
negative. So before I factor this, I'm going to write it like this. Negative 1x plus, now how do we get a negative 2 and have a negative 1 in it? Well, we can say plus negative 1 times negative 2 equals 0 because negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. But now each of these terms has a negative 1 in it. So we'll have x squared times x minus 2 plus negative 1 times x can mark these out, x plus negative 2 is x minus 2 equals 0. And now you see that x minus 2 occurs on both sides of the plus sign, so it becomes the greatest common factor, GCF. GCF. So I'm going to write X minus two. Oh, I pulled out an X squared. Looks what I almost lost. Oh my goodness. X minus two. Times X squared. Minus one. Equals zero. But one is the same number as one squared because one times one equals one. So one is one squared and we have the difference of two squares. So this will factor. So I'll have X minus two times x plus 1 times x minus 1 equals 0. And now this is completely factored. So we're going to set each factor equal to 0. x minus 2 equals 0. X plus 1 equals 0. And X minus 1 equals 0. And then add 2 to both sides. Back on the far left. So X equals 2. Subtract 1, subtract 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. X equals negative 1. Plus 1, plus 1. X equals 1. Now these are, are our zeros. Positive two, negative one, and positive one. And they each have multiplicity one. Mult one, mult one, mult one. Yep, and we're supposed to give the multiplicities. So that would be the second question here that would pop up. Let's see what it looks like. 
OK, so. My keyboard is where I can't see it. All right, here we go. Um, negative one. Comma. One. Comma. Two. Now I'm sure. I have to check answer. Oh, good. Now. Each zero has multiplicity. One. Uh, check answer. Yes. OK, so see how that that second question pops up. This is one of those. All right. Now back here. So I should write that up here somewhere. And this was what? This was number nine. OK. And that was number eight. Very good, Barbara. You can count. Nine. This was nine. So our zeros were, where can I write this? Zeros. Negative one, order doesn't matter, I'm sure. One, two, and we'll put a blue box around it. Oops, and we've already written the multiplicity. So now this is your chance to review another kind of factoring. Number 10 is a U substitution problem. Remember those? F of X. You were first introduced to those, oh, I don't know, week five. Yeah. Of X to the fourth minus 28 X squared plus 75. Now this is a quartic, but it's the kind of quartic that's a trinomial, and the middle term has an x squared, and the leading, the degree of the function, four, is two times this number, and when that happens, you can use U substitution. U equals X squared. And U squared equals X squared squared. Which is U squared equals X to the fourth. So now I can rewrite this. And we're being asked to find the zeros and the multiplicities. So this will be u squared minus 28 u plus 75. Now this is one of those that I know that I don't have to check my calculator for that 75 equals three times 25. And since it's positive, it equals negative three times negative 25. And negative three plus negative 25 equals negative 28. And that is the number that these two need to add up to. So that tells me right away how I can factor. Okay, now first let me write uh, F of U.
f of u equals u squared minus 28u plus 75. And since we're being asked to find the zeros, I'm going to say u squared minus 28u, let me make that longer, plus 75 equals zero. That's the way you find the zeros. And that will give us then u, u, minus 3, whoops, minus 25, so that u minus 3 equals 0, and u minus 25 equals 0. And I add 3 to both sides, so that u equals 3, and add 25 to both sides. Oh, 25. So that u equals 25. The danger here is feeling like you're done because you factored, you've gotten answers, solutions, but they're not the solutions. Because what we did was we solved f of u, but we have to go back to f of x, which means I need to resubstitute. u equals x squared. So, uh, uh, boom, x squared equals 3, and x squared equals 25. So I take the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared equals, equals, plus or minus, the square root of 3, so that x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. And over here, the square root of x squared equals plus or minus the square root of 25, so that x equals plus or minus 5. So those are, are our are our zeros. So the zeros are negative the square root of 3, positive the square root of 3, negative 5, and positive 5. Notice there are four solutions, four zeros, which are solutions to well they are, to this. If we had set x to the fourth minus 28x squared plus 75 equals 0, the solutions to that equation would be the zeros of the function. These are our zeros. There are four because the degree of the polynomial is four. You're guaranteed to have four zeros of some kind. Now, just for the sake of next week, these are called rational, yeah, irrational zeros. And these are called rational zeros.
what you're asked for in this problem is just find the zeros and then find their multiplicity, but each one occurs once. So the multiplicity of all the zeros is one because each one only occurs once, or it's, it's better to say each one occurs only once. That's what multiplicity one is. So let's go back over this because it's been a while since you've used U substitution. We had a quartic, but it's a trinomial. And the middle term is quadratic. When that happens, you can use U substitution so that X squared equals U and X to the fourth equals U squared. The value of doing that is that you can use all the tricks that you know to solve a quadratic equation. Whether it's using the quadratic formula or it's using um, uh, um, uh, factoring, which is what we did. So we solved for u and then we had to look up here to see what u equals. u equals x squared. So we had to resubstitute x squared for u and then solve for x. And to do that, we use the um, square root method where you take the square root of each side, but the number side has a plus or minus in front of it. Because all positive real numbers have two square roots, a positive square root and a negative square root. And that is the whole story of U substitution.